Joining me on the line, as he does every Friday, he made room for us with his new podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Reyes is here. <laughs> wow. You're just, you, you just like digging your heels in on that one. And to think, I kind of wanted you as a guest. I was going to say, when do I going to be a guest on the show to bring my own special peasant views of movies to you two critics? <laughs> Well, we're, I definitely want to try and get you on the show. It's just we'll have to figure out what movie and everything, but we'll we'll talk about that off air. Our point is I would love to have you on the show because we it's not just getting talent on the show. It's also getting friends of ours who are, you know, entertainment personalities like yourself or entertainment journalists like our, yeah, our other yeah, dear. Yeah. I had fun. I don't know why I dreamed it up the other day, but I uh, I, <laughs> I sent the thing to Mike to wish him luck with his new podcast, and it was uh, – what is it, one-time rental or, or – Overdue rentals. Overdue rentals. I I may I saw a box box. Uh, bleh, I saw a blockbuster logo. I'm like, oh, I was always overdue when I went to that place. Yeah. So I remade the thing, but I made it with overdue rentals with Mike Reyes and some. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the funniest damn thing on Friday, but then I I, I remade it and sent it to you. Well, that's what I was just gonna say. Yeah, you actually put Matthew's name on there. You were you were throwing out a fun joke, but you've also been really supportive, and I thank you for that. Uh, I, the, you're welcome. Show. Well, you deserve it. I want to see you do. I want to see you do well. So, because then I'm going to use you for all your work. Hey, if it boosts this show, I'm. I will be absolutely. I would be glad if it gave this show a boost because I love this show too. I go. love doing shows. Period. Uh, but yeah, the real quick, the funny thing about overdue Reynolds, uh, rent rentals bro i can't talk today um what would be rentals? blockbuster yeah what would be rentals blockbuster <laughs> i don't know what it was and since they're not really around anymore i can kind of you know tell this story without saying oh this one movie rental place unless you're in oregon every time i went into that place i had an overdue fee i don't know how i i got into an argument with the guy one day because i came i came to the store and it was like one of the five-day rentals I yeah. was I was three days early. I dropped it in the box and I went in and I went to rent some more movies. And he goes, "Hey, you got a uh, got a late fee." I go, "For what?" And he goes, "You know, such and such movie." I go, "It's in the box and it's three days early." And he goes, "You got a late fee." And I'm like, "Explain to me how." And he go, kind of looked at me. I go, "When was I? When was the the date?" He goes, "Friday or whatever." I go, "Is that in the future?" You got a rent late fee. I'm like, "Just keep the movies. I'm leaving and I'm not paying this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just i remember like and was this in the era of no late fees and it's like yeah no late fees if i'm not mistaken the catch was you had to bring it back by 30 days or at some point because yeah. then you own the movie that's not a late fee one of the best jokes in any movie and it's not <laughs> it's not one that you really stand out or that really stands out but you remember the movie road trip yeah when they uh he's looking for the tape and he hits the thing and it's nothing but blockbuster boxes and it's like they've stolen oh. every single movie in this place <laughs> i don't know why but i love that scene anyways mike Rage from cinemablend.com is joining us to talk about movies this week there's a big one coming out on hbo max Mortal Kombat is finally out today. No, 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 no. You got, you got to say it right. You got to say Mortal Kombat. There you go. Uh, you saw it uh, just to kind of catch everybody up. They released the first seven minutes of it earlier this week. Um, what did you think? Yeah. Um. So I got to see the whole movie. Thankfully, uh, thank you to my contacts getting the HBO Max link to me. It's good. Is like it? this is it is a lot of damn fun, and I st I went from. Just, you know, I was interested in how they were going to redo this and make it like a serious martial arts like movie with a story. Yeah. I went from being interested, like, oh, that's fun, to like eventually shifting into fan mode towards the end. And it's like, oh, that's Reptile. Oh, I know that. Oh, I know that. <laughs> I wish I could have seen this in a movie theater. And they did have a, a, pre a press screening for it. But the whole thing is, they want to try to keep it under like between 10 and 20 people because of safety regulations. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah, that. Yeah. It was a theater in the heart of Philly where the parking is really expensive. And it's like, I don't know if I want to go to the middle of Philly. <laughs> do that. So because uh, in New York, it's easier to take the train. Yeah. The, uh, cause the first version of these movies when they came out, what was that? The nineties? Yeah. I want to say 95. I mean, they and were... I, as a kid, you thought it was the coolest thing you've ever seen. It's a bad movie. Like, looking back, they're stupid. 
It's so much fun, though. Like, I get that the especially oh, the second one I know was just I, I did not touch the second one because I kept hearing horrible things about yeah, that. Yeah, it's bad. First one, I had so much fun with that first one, especially Johnny Cage and Raiden. Uh, and well, I think it was the soundtrack that just made it so uh, that that was the yeah. part because I was doing martial arts at the time and like, God dang, everything we did was to that stupid soundtrack. Techno syndrome ruled 1995 for a time. I don't remember if it was before or after the Batman Forever soundtrack because that was same summer, if I'm not mistaken. And if it wasn't for Joel Schumacher, uh, we never would have gotten Kiss from a Rose because I think it was like one of Seal's more obscure singles. And then he's like, "No, I want this song for my movie. This is like this is a per- yeah. this is what I." But anyway, back to Mortal Kombat. It's a lot of damn fun. <laughs> Just the characters are – it's nice to see proper ethnic representations of the characters. We have an Asian lead yeah, uh, with Louis Tan who plays an MMA fighter that is basically drawn into the, the mythos of the Mortal Kombat tournament. And, you know, he meets up with Sona, Sonya Blade. He meets Kano. He meets Raiden. He meets Liu Kang, Kung Lao. Shang Tsung's in there. Goro just, oh. oh God. I is... remember, you know what? Go back to the original movie real quick. The, the animatronic Goro from back then was not bad. No, not at all. Like, you kind of believed it. I believe that thing got in the nuts. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> $500 sunglasses. <laughs> That's so good. All right, so Mortal Kombat's good. That's awesome. I like to hear it. Uh, is yeah. it in theater? Is it in theaters, or is it just on uh, HBO Max? It will be in regular and IMAX theaters. Okay. Uh, I think early showings started last night. I could be wrong. Okay, but it will be on HBO Max for the first thirty days. All right, cool. So you go to HBO Max. They'll tell you like the date that it expi- it, it goes off. So just keep that in mind. All right, so I got that to watch and the uh, wrap up to Falcon and Winter Soldier. It's going to be a good weekend. Oh yeah, I still got to watch last week's and then the wrap up. Real quick side note: uh, 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 Kurt Russell's son, John Walker, in the in yeah, like how he's either loving it that he's getting so much hate, or he has to just be like, "This was the worst idea ever." I have an idea. He love it because just coming from like the family that he does like you know kurt russell was snake plissken and not everyone likes snake plissken no so seeing your dad kind of grow up growing up seeing your dad as an anti-hero who doesn't care like really doesn't care up until a certain point what happens you know i think that, that kind of helps i'm gonna liken it to uh pro wrestling which i do want to do a quick take on pro wrestling here in a minute uh, right. but um I got to like it to pro wrestling where if you're a heel, you want everybody to hate you as much as possible in that building. Like to yeah. the point where, have you ever heard the story about Ric Flair? I think it was in Japan. I don't think I did. Please tell me. So Ric Flair, one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time, right? He, he was such a heat. Uh, he was such a hated heel that there was, I for, I want to say it was Japan, but I can't. Rem- I I need to talk to my buddy Jeremy because he he was a pro wrestler. He's really into it. But anyways, oh. in the match, Flair is just hated, and they could sense in the building that if he wins, which he was scheduled to win, like it's gonna get ugly. So like during the course of the match, he was, and I want to say it was like the the Japanese champion uh, of of the time, and he changed the match outcome in the middle of it to be like, hey dude, just pin me because I don't want to die <laughs> yeah so anyways uh mike reyes from cinemablend.com joining me on the line right now uh you know what let's just get the pro wrestling thing out of the way real quick it's not movie related but if you haven't watched the biography thing of stone cold steve austin it is oh, legi- yeah. it, it is legitimately one of the best things i've ever watched and don't they have rowdy roddy piper coming this weekend he is on sunday night and the one i didn't know they were doing uh, which is kind of neat but i th- I got a feeling it's going to be kind of the same thing over and over again. They're doing a show afterwards that it's just an hour long show about the WWE going out and trying to find some of this old memorabilia. Oh, wow. So they had Mick Foley go out and he was looking for like his original flannel vest for Cactus Jack, the original uh, leather shirt that he wore as mankind. And because they, I think they want to build like a museum or an exhibit type thing, but they, they don't have a lot of this stuff in their warehouse. So they're trying to track it down. Could you imagine if they just put out a message or it's like, look, if you've got memorabilia, 
we will give you like I don't know what type of term limit they'd want to put in it. Like maybe lifelong seats to WrestleMania or like you know five WrestleManias or something. Like you get tickets if you bring in your memorabilia. Like one guy uh, on the Mick Foley one, one guy said, "Hey, listen, uh, he had what did he have? He had uh, uh, he had one of the original Sockos for Mankind." Okay. Oh wow. And he said, listen, and Mick actually went to these guys' houses to try and authenticate it and say, you know, so you hear a little bit of the history of the item as well. But he goes, he goes, listen, man, if you hang out and let my kids come meet you, you can have it. He goes, I'd be happy to give it back to you. So Mick Foley That's hung out. Foley. And they, uh, I want to say he uh, watched a pay-per-view with them too, like him and his kids and stuff. Oh, and got pizza that, and all this. Yeah. That's so, fantastic. Uh, what, are the, uh, what are the other guys, though? He... Uh, <laughs> He was such an a about it. He had Mick Foley's original flannel vest for Cactus Jack, right? And he yeah. said, uh, they're like, listen, we'll give you like seven grand. He's like, no, I don't think because, you know, it, then I won't have that in my collection. And they go, hey, how about we take you to the WWE warehouse and give you a private tour that no one ever gets? And he's like, okay. Uh, and, he, and then they go, maybe we can trade. Like, maybe you see something there that we can trade for. So they get there. He gets to do this whole damn tour. And then he, uh, they're in the thing. And he goes, yeah, you know, I saw something that I'd be willing to trade for. I'd be willing to trade this vest for one of Mick Foley's two by fours wrapped in barbed wire. And they said, okay. And then he goes, and $2,500. And everybody had this look around the room. Like you. D yeah. That, you know what? If you really wanted that, you should have put that offer up on, in the first place. Like, yeah. okay, I want a tour. And twenty, I get yeah. to pick what I want and twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Like, okay, we can just say no to that, and that's it. You don't waste people's time. Yeah. I get that they want reality TV drama, but that's like that's the only. Foley, I understand is one of the nicest guys in pro wrestling, and you don't do that to someone like him. He actually, uh, they hired him to do uh, a, uh, a WWE night with the uh, basketball team in town, and Mick Foley like came and he sat with one of the guys in the front row. Uh, I can't remember what the guy's name is, but he sat, ate popcorn with him, and hung out. And he was just the nicest guy. Ric Flair, also a really nice guy. They had him out for it. But um, uh, getting back to it, the, the only problem with that series is I think it's going to be a lot of the same thing where it's like, hey, let's go and try and barter with this guy to get something back, mm. and, you know. But the biography yeah. thing, I will absolutely tell you right now, watch it. I need to watch that, and I still need to watch Dark Side of the Ring because that's something else that's just fascinated me. Dark Side of the Ring, like which one? Like both seasons. They, it's hard. I'm not going to lie. It's it's rough. It, it looks hard. So. But like wrestling, wrestling was just something that never really appealed to me as a kid. Yeah. But just the more that I've seen people love it and the more like the people that I've discovered who love it, like you, especially I, it's just really enforced with me that it is very much this geek adjacent sort of thing yeah. where the worlds feed into each other. And then I guess maybe growing up in like the eighties and early nineties era of it, it didn't feel like that. Yeah. But I guess when you start to get to the late nineties and then now it really started to become, uh, there really started to be a strong crossover between geek and, and wrestling culture. It wasn't just this jock thing. Yeah. The I will uh, finish it with this. Somebody put out a tweet after the Stone Cold biography, and it, it essentially said nobody knew how lucky we were to live through the Austin era of wrestling until you yeah. look back. And like my wife, she 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 got her COVID shot earlier that day and was trying you know trying to stay awake, and we were just both just fell in love with this series. So, anyways, uh, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joining me on the line right now. Uh, back to movie talk. What do we got for news? What's like uh, the big story this week? A big story that kind of just dropped into my lap is the fact that fans have apparently paid for a billboard in Los Angeles asking Marvel Studios to bring back Tony Stark from the dead. And the, I, I think the best tweet that sums it up, sums up why this is a bad idea, we posted this, this, this tweet. Pepper, you can rest now these fans and it's like a discolored photo of Gru from despicable me and it just says on the bottom no <laughs> uh i don't being a comic book fan of that world and stuff i mean no one's ever dead and i think even kevin feige said that this week uh when it was in relation to uh alfred uh modine doc Ock. Oh, Molina. Molina. Yeah. uh because uh he he gave an interview about uh coming back as doc ock and kevin feige saying that line of no one's ever really dead yeah if they were gonna bring tony stark back 
I really like the idea of bringing him back as like the AI. Oh, definitely. Because that's something that actually kind of happened in the in the comic book series. And that's how uh yeah. and that's how the Ironheart series got going. Uh Well, yeah, and that's now becoming a a going concern. It feels like I I feel like fans are a little less forgiving when that happens in live action than it does in a comic book. Yeah. Unless you got a good reason and just there's other variations we could go with. I don't see a good reason. And plus Robert Downey Jr. is probably just done with it. He wants to go do his own thing. Yeah. Well, the other thing about it, though, I mean, as they get closer to doing the multiple universes, you can bring bring Tony Stark back. It just won't be the MCU Tony Stark. It'll be some other Tony Stark. And you know what? I'm fine with that. This one had such a great ending to his character that uh, that's the only reason I want to because it was such a great ending. Yeah. So. No, I that, that's why I totally agree with that. And plus, there's just the fact that you're going to do these alternate universe Iron Man. Like, we could finally get Tom Cruise yeah. as Iron Man, as like an alternate universe Iron Man because there that was a joke that they were playing around with in the Spider Verse. Yeah. Where they were not only having, I think it was James Cameron and either Tom Cruise or Leonardo DiCaprio, like doing a gag where, or they have their them as characters doing a gag with like commentary on their version of Spider Man. Yeah. There was also just the suggestion they made at the end where it's like, well, what if we bring in Toby and Andrew? And they're like, nah, that's that's too soon. We can't do that right now. We um, can't do that now. Hold on, Toby. Andrew. I'm sorry. What, what was that other part? Uh, well, no, no, just write, making a note. You know, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. To. it's grocery list. I forgot cheese. Hey, yeah, yeah. Spider, Spider Verse, Spider Verse. We got a sequel coming. That's good. Yeah. Uh, as we wrap up today, uh, Mike Ray is from CinemaBlend.com joining me on the line. You can find out more about him on uh, social medias. Uh, uh, Mr. Controversy 83 and Overdue Rentals, new podcast out now. Uh, we'll have links at the bottom of the page, which I will start including the link to uh, Overdue Rentals on the Very cool. Page. So uh, is there anything really uh, else big that happened this week other than that? I, kn I know you sent some other stuff, but we're getting kind of long in the tooth. So. Uh, Michael Keaton's finally confirmed as being Batman and the Flash. They started filming. Uh, Knuckles looks like he's going to be in Sonic 2 because of some set photos with uh, the sort of reference dummies. Okay. And... Quiet Place Part 2 looks like it's going to be the next huge pandemic hit, which they say could bring in 30 to $50 million domestically, opening weekend. Oh, nice. Hey, going back to the uh, – uh, what was the story right before Sonic? Uh, Michael Keaton is Batman again? That's wrong. They need to just make the Batman Beyond movie. Well, a lot of people are thinking maybe this is the gateway to getting that. I, uh... Because they, Warner Brothers is still very much laser-focused – on the universe that they're building right now to the point where they literally gave Zack Snyder his Justice League back and is like, oh, no, okay, you, you finished your trilogy. That's cool. And he's like, but it was supposed to be a five-movie sequel. Do you see these numbers, Justice League 2 and 3? Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. I saw something on TikTok last night. I don't remember where who who did it or whatever, but somebody said that there was uh, uh, a story floating around out there that the Russo brothers may be putting out a Zack Snyder esque version of Endgame. <laughs> I I don't know I don't know if it's true or it was one of those you Weird. know videos you kind of flip through, but they were talking about it being <laughs> like six <laughs> hours long. I very much doubt that. I do too, but then uh, I remember how they re-released it so they could be the number one movie and stuff. And I'm like, oh. yeah, with a Stan Lee tribute and like a couple deleted scenes. The only way you're going to get an extended version of Endgame is if they bundle it with Infinity War and turn it into the whole bloody affair MCU edition. Yeah. So I don't know. I just yeah. something I saw last them. night. I don't know if it's credible or not, but it's just something I saw. And I'm like, you know what? In this day and age, I, I could see it. So Anyways. I saw this Marvel thing on TikTok. Yeah, well, I saw funny jokes on TikTok. Those don't; those aren't real. I saw a great new TikTok, and I don't remember the name of it, but it's this old man who jumps up in the air, and he does, like, stop motion, where he's always floating around in the air, and it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Okay, that legit sounds funny. Oh, and the other one, this guy has a channel, and sorry, this is getting kind of off the rails, but uh, another one I came across, it was a guy that he, you know the Darth Vader scene from Rogue One? Yeah. He goes... Any song on the planet will go with this scene. Oh no! They turned it. They did a reverse. My heart will go on. Yes. Yeah, so it's that scene. 
file. It's that scene over and over again to every song on the planet, like Inner Sandman, and then uh, like Green Ooh. Day, and then like My Heart Will Go On, and all this other stuff. And it's like, oh my god, I'll send you a couple of them. Uh, my kids started listening to a uh, song called "It's Raining Tacos." They did it with that one, and it even works. <laughs> right. So we, we movie, built movie, this movie, city. News, so movie news, movie news, movie news. But let's talk about TikTok. Fuck you, Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com. Joins me every week on the show to talk about movies and stuff. He's got a new podcast out uh, called Overdue Rentals. We'll have uh, links at the bottom of the page. Mike, go fuck yourself. <laughs> B-Socks, I am no longer contractually obligated to be here. See ya. Have a good one. <laughs>